This is One on One. I want to introduce you to one of our neighbors, one of our most prestigious neighbors. <laughs> uh, Dr. Joseph Polisi is the president of the Juilliard School. Juilliard, what do they do there? <laughs> Since 1905, you guys have been absolutely the best, the gold standard. Yeah. Tell folks what Juilliard is all about. And uh, by the way, th your 30th year? This is my 30th year as president. Yep. Congratulations. Tell Thanks folks about much. Juilliard. Well, it's a school of music, dance, and drama. 1905 is when we started as a, a school of music to replicate the standards and traditions of European conservatories. And in 1951, when William Schumann was president, he brought on a dance division because he believed that dance and music were integrated art forms, which, of course, they are. And then when Juilliard was asked to move to Lincoln Center from 122nd Street, where Manhattan School of Music is now, um, a drama division was, was started. And so when we finally got here in 1969, when the building opened uh, at Lincoln Center, we had all three performing arts divisions, drama, dance, and music. Let's take a quick look at a video that tells a little bit of the story of this uh, terrific institution. Let's take a look at the clip. Who exactly were we looking at there? Who are those students? Uh, these are very talented young people from all around the world. About 30% of our students are international students. And it's a very selective process of admission. And uh, we try to find the, the very best potential, creativity, imagination, discipline, technique. How many people apply? Over a course of a year, about 5,500 to 6,000. But a lot of them are screened out for various reasons, whether it be the fact that they don't play a, a mid-period Beethoven sonata and piano. Oh, oh that little thing? Yeah, that sort of stuff, yeah. <laughs> how, many, how many slots are we talking about in coming class? Well, it depends on each division. In drama, uh, yeah, let's it's talk about extremely drama. selective. So we have about 1,600 applicants, auditioners, who actually come to us uh, for only 18 spots. Oh, and they so all audition? Everybody auditions. And the only way to get into Juilliard, the only way to get through the door is, is to audition. But then after that, uh, there's a whole series of filters and, and, and interviews. But that's the whole concept about Juilliard, I think, that's so wonderful. It's about merit, it's about excellence, uh, and it's about potential. But, but, but it's also about opportunity because you also have a lot of diversity. And there, there's opportunity for, for some young people who otherwise would not have this opportunity. So how is it that you figure out, particularly for folks who don't have the financial wherewithal mm -hmm. to do it, how do you figure all that out? Because they do go. And there is opportunity. How do you do that? Well, first of all, it's, it's based on talent. And it's based on uh, a desire to, to try to go into the profession. I say to parents when they ask, should my child come to Juilliard, I'll, I'll say, is your child white hot about being an actor, dancer, or musician? And if they're not sure, I'll, I often say, I don't think Juilliard perhaps is the place for you. Let's, let's think about it later. White hot means? That all, their all. only passion, their only desire is to be a dancer, actor, or musician. Well, if someone yeah. says, well, I'm kind of into it. It's sort of my thing. I'd just like to test it out. No, no, no. Juilliard's not the place. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> no, no, no. That's sort of like saying I want to go to West Point, but I'm not really <laughs> sure if I'm interested in I'm not in totally army. committed. Yeah, right. <laughs> Nah. No, you need complete commitment to be at the Juilliard School. And, and, and once you do get into the school, uh, then it's actually an environment that, that, that really uh, makes sure that these young people flourish, not only as artists, but as, as uh, young adults as well. You know, describe, <coughs> excuse me, describe some of the folks who have come out of Juilliard and have done some pretty good things. <laughs> well, I suppose our alumni are our most illustrious group of, uh, of individuals and people who have influenced the arts all around the world from... Leontine Price to Renee Fleming to uh, Itzhak Perlman to Yo-Yo Ma to Robin Williams to Kevin Klein, Kevin Spacey, Paul Taylor in dance, Laura Lubavitch. So it's this wide array of extraordinary. So a huge group of underachievers. Is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> and, and so, and those leaders, stuff, leaders, yeah. actually, those really incredibly talented people, do they keep a connection? Oh, you? yes. Oh, yes. When, if they don't live in New York City, when they are here touring or performing uh, or visiting, uh, 
uh, they will always come by for a master class. And it, it may not be a public master class. It may be something just for the fourth year actors or when Kevin Spacey's in town. I know he, you know, obviously he's in London a great deal. Uh, but he will always come by for a reading or for, or for something like that. So it's a great tradition of continuation. You know, we're a part of the WNET, the studio, the Tisch Studio, and, and our president, you know, Spiro, made sure that this place is a part of this community. In it's in our building. Way. It's in right? the Juilliard building. And you're such a huge part, way before us. What is the place for Juilliard and the New York fabric of this ah. community? Well, as far as I'm concerned, the arts are an incredibly important part of our social fabric. And um, I think that uh, Juilliard exists to plan for the future, to, to allow young artists in drama, dance, and music to, to make a difference in the world through their art, a positive difference. And it's a great frustration for me that the educational system in the United States, not just in New York City, on the primary and secondary levels, has really uh, not supported the arts the way they should. So one of the principal things that we do at Juilliard, aside from all the performances and training, is to make sure that our students have a sense of their own mission as uh, citizens within a, uh, within a larger society. Ambassadors for the arts. And get, get, the, get the arts out there to communities and to audiences that would not ordinarily see them. You're doing important work, um, Dr. Joseph uh, Polisi, who is the uh, president of Juilliard celebrating his 30th year, and we wish you an, another 30 or forever how long you choose to be there. It's well, terrific very work much. and a great place. Thank you so much. Okay. One-on-one -on -one will continue from the Tisch WNET studios right after this. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating 25 years of broadcast excellence in partnership with St. Joseph's Healthcare System. Funding has been provided by Barnabas Health, Berkeley College, the law firm of Gibbons PC, United Water, Wells Fargo, Verizon Communications, and by New Jersey Natural Gas. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato has been made possible in part by the Adler Aphasia Center, 